Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is video number 24 in the series CK2024. And in this video, we'll be looking into cluster roles and how we can implement that. Uh, we'll compare it with the role and role bindings that we did in the previous video. And as always, there's gonna be some task in the GitHub repository of day 24 folder and you can check that out and you can try to do that by yourself and it will be a good hands-on exercise for you even if you are going for the certification or if you are doing for the learning and you know self-practice it will be helpful without any further ado let's get into the video so let's do a quick recap so we looked into authentication and authorization difference between those two and basically symmetric encryption or symmetric certificate to think about it then we looked into authorization that we briefly had a look around attribute based authorization and we did the deep dive into role based access control or role based authorization then we looked into node authorization and webhook when we had a overview about it now further down the line in the rpec section we have seen that how you can create a role basically role has certain permissions attached to it for example list pod watch pods get pods and so on so we are creating a role let's say pod reader role then we create a role binding this role binding attach this role to a user or a group of users so now when we create the role binding and it will reference the role as well as the user or group it will assign these permissions to the user or group right so this is how it will happen. So I'm just going to make a copy of it over here, right? So this role has these permissions. When we created the role binding, this user or the group will get that permission. So this is how roles and role binding works. We also discussed that roles basically are namespace scoped. That means it is not applied at the cluster level resource. So I'm just going to write it down over here. So it is name space scoped that means all the resources that are there within a namespace only those will be applicable to the role and role binding like what are these uh, resources you know, such as let's say uh, pods deployments replica sets there could be many more like services and so on so these are only applicable to namespace. So we have some cluster scope resources, cluster scope resource such as namespace. Right? Namespace is a part of cluster and all the resources, all the pods, deployment, replica sets, config maps, secrets, all those are part of one or more namespace. Right? So namespace has cluster wide scope. Then we also have nodes. It right? nodes also have cluster wide scope. And there are many more. So to grant access at the cluster scope resources, instead of creating role, we create something as cluster role. And this is specified that this role is not at the namespace level. This is at the cluster level. So we have a cluster role and cluster role could have certain permissions. So now instead of list pod, watch pods, get pods, let's say list nodes or watch nodes get nodes all these cluster level permissions and then similar way we can create a role binding it just this time this role binding will be called as cluster role binding copy everything it a little up And we attach this cluster role to user or a group with the help of cluster role binding. The role binding. And I'm gonna get arrows over here. Okay, now once it is attached, the same way this user or group will have uh, certain permissions like list pod, list nodes, uh, watch nodes, get nodes. And that's the main difference between a role and a cluster role. Cluster role applied at the, I'm gonna highlight this one over here. So this is at the namespace scoped. Okay. And uh, the cluster role, as the name suggests, it's at the namespace scoped. 
as the cluster scope all right um that's the main difference between that but uh you see uh these rules um the normal rules without the cluster rule this rule this can also be at the clusters how like the way we did in the previous video we did not specify any namespace in the role definition yaml so when you don't specify anything as part of the namescape namespace that means is applicable to all the namespaces and when it is applicable to all the namespaces it is at the cluster level okay that's the main difference between that now uh, let's go to the visual studio code and let's see how do we create cluster roles and cluster right uh, let's have a look at how we can see what resources are at the namespace level and what resources are at the cluster scope level so for that we would run the command kubectl api resources then namespace equal to true this will give us the list of all the resources that are at the namespace level we do hyphen hyphen yeah so here is the list so we have resources such as cron job stateful set replica set deployment services pods persistent volume claims config maps bindings and rules and a lot of other things right so these are at the namespace level now how do we see the resources at cluster level so we just change this command to namespace equal to false now this will return the resources at the cluster level so we have cluster roles cluster role bindings csi node storage classes don't worry about the storage things we haven't covered it yet but we have separate videos for the same we'll cover that and then we have ingress classes certificate signing requests this we have already created so this is at the cluster level and we see custom resource definition api services webhooks and there are a lot more like namespaces and nodes as well so now we know the difference between the resources at the namespace level and at the cluster level let's see how we can create let's say we have to we'll we'll use the same example that we see we'll create a cluster role and we'll assign it to the user cluster role that should have the permission to get the nodes from the server so for that let's first quickly check if we currently have the permission of not so k auth can i get nodes okay this command we have already discussed and let's use the user that we have created as Krishna. Now it says resources nodes is not namespace scoped. First of all, it's not namespace scoped. It is at the cluster level. And then it is showing that no, you don't have the permission. Like this user does not have the permission. So we need to create the permissions. So for that, we'll be creating an object called cluster role. We have like multiple ways, imperative way and the declarative way. So let's uh, have a look at k create cluster role and then hyphen hyphen help so it will have verb it will have resources and so on so let's see a sample command um here it is kubectl create cluster role then name of the role verb and then we have a resource or a group of resources then resource name right so resource will be our node and resource name will be the name of the node or like you can leave it and it will provide the access for all the nodes so let's take this command from here and i'm gonna copy it so resource is node and verb equal to get list and watch okay and cluster role name would be node reader okay that's created if you want to look at the command again let me clear the screen so here is our command it's not coming at the full screen so let me just okay wait let me type it out again okay i don't think i can make the changes over here so let me just create a new cluster role and let's call it node reader 2 and then kubectl create cluster role and role 
test and then we have hyphen hyphen verb equal to list read watch and then we have hyphen hyphen resource equal to node so that was the command that we used so if you hit enter uh, it says uh, read is not a standard resource verb okay i guess it should be get uh, i made a mistake over there and it says role already exists because we have created it already so that's that's all right so now let's do a k get cr or cluster roles oh cluster roles does not have the short form so let's use cluster role and there are all the default roles that were created uh, these roles like at the system level or at the node level so we'll just grab our role that we have created so grab node reader okay here's a role okay it's been created now let's do a describe on this node in this uh, role cluster role describe cluster role name of the role okay it says resources are nodes and this resource name is blank that means all the resources that means all the nodes and the verbs are get list and watch so the user will have get list or watch access okay currently we only created the cluster role now we have to attach the cluster role with the user or the group so for that we have to create a cluster role binding so let's uh, have a look at the command k create cluster role binding hyphen hyphen help okay and role okay i have missed an r in the command so it should be cluster role binding now it should show me the command so it says kubectl create cluster role binding name name of the role binding then name of the cluster role and then hyphen hyphen user username or group name or service account name service account will look later but for now we need till here so a cluster role name was node reader okay and cluster role binding name was let's say reader binding and then we have to add the username so hyphen hyphen user is equal to krishna okay it says binding has been created if we do k get cluster role binding and then let's grab reader okay it is there reader binding now if we do a k describe cluster role binding reader binding it will show us that user krishna will have the node reader role on this particular cluster okay now let's see if we have logged in with the krishna user or not so kind kubectl config get contexts okay so currently we are using this context okay so first let's use the can i auth command and then we'll switch the context okay so we'll use the same command that we've used earlier okay auth can i get notes as krishna and now it says yes yes krishna can get the notes from this cluster the user has the permissions now let's switch the context so k k config use context and then we'll be using uh, krishna as the context now i have switched to that context now if i do k get notes i'm able to get the notes if i do k describe notes what do you think should happen i have the read access right so i can describe the node how about delete nodes k delete node right i shouldn't have access to delete the node because i did not provide it that access so it says the access is forbidden user krishna cannot delete resources nodes in the api group so that's uh what um cluster role and cluster role binding does and how that is how it it is applied 
All right, that's it about this video. I hope you found the session helpful and valuable. If you did, try to complete the comments and like target, which is 200 likes and 200 comments in the next 24 hours. I'm sure you can do that. Um, that's all about it. And if you face any issues, any difficulty in completing the task that is there in the GitHub repository, or if you were following along the video and you are facing some issues or you have some doubts, let me know in the comment section below. And you can also reach out to us in the Discord server and our community members will help you out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable support till now. And I will see you soon with the next video, which will be about service account. So do not miss that and do not miss this one. So thank you and have a good day.